Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, another way we try and persuade our students or our applicants to come and study at Swans University, and that is through the use of group tasks and keeping them fun and interesting by having a little bit of hidden information. So we do this as part of our admissions interviews here at Swansea University. The admissions interviews are all about us finding out a little bit more about our students, understanding who they are, whether they'd be a good fit for the programme here at the university. We do this through what would we call MMIs, multi mini interviews, where we test things like their calculation skills, we test their uh, ability to understand the profession of pharmacy. And one of the key things that was always missing was the ability for us to understand how well they worked as a team or how good their communication skills were. So I was tasked with designing something that we could use to have a little bit of engagement with the students, get them working together with minimal facilitation by an academic to better get them working and so we could keep a, a, get a sense of how well they were uh, communicating, working as a team and being generally collegial to one another. Now, with admissions interviews, one of the other key factors is that we're not only looking for the students that we want to come here, the students are looking for the university that they want to come to as well. And so we wanted to make these as interesting and as fun as we possibly could. And so what I want to do today is just run through what exactly we did with our group tasks, how we put them together, how we've used them to keep the um, interview process quite light, quite entertaining, and hopefully give you some inspiration for something that you may wish to do with your teaching or your sessions. So generally speaking, we would have four students as part of the team. Each of those students will be given some sort of hidden information. This is usually shared as a link. And I know that if some of you may want to test out the QR codes. I'm going to show you what they actually lead to in a moment. But uh, if you did ever want to have a go, this is what we'd do. And then we show the students a grid. So this grid is essentially going to be a bit of a jigsaw for the students to work out. Each student has a different piece of the jigsaw and what happens is there's only actually one solution to this. The students need to work together using the information that only they have to uh, piece this together and so they do that through communication. We tell them right at the start that this is a verbal task. We don't want them to draw things and hold pieces of paper up to the screen when they're um, conducting this. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this is all conducted over Zoom um, virtually. <laughs> this is something that we do uh, online for the students. And so with each student having their hidden information, they start talking to each other and trying to work out exactly how the jigsaw gets pieced together. So this is an example of one of the pieces of the puzzle. You'll see that this student has been given the number one, the number nine and then the number 11. And on there are a number of different emojis. These emojis all come together to fill out the jigsaw. And what we can see is that actually there are a number of different overlapping emojis, emojis that run from one uh, square to potentially another square. And so if I reveal another student, we can see that the stack of books in square 11 will fit neatly with the stack of books in number three. So it would be up to these two students to work out how this jigsaw starts piecing itself together. We have chosen hopefully some quite uh, relevant emojis to make up our jigsaw. We are a pharmacy degree, so we've got some viruses, some tablets, Swansea University, so we've got the head of a swan, um, the Welsh flag on there, a surfer, and obviously the books and the, the graduates demonstrating uh, the future for our students. So you can see here that there are quite obviously a lot of potential overlaps for the students to identify. As I've said, there's only one novel solution to this, and this was a bit of a um, headache getting this to work, that something would only fit uh, one individual way. 
we get students may, being able to take those first steps and saying, well, this must line up with this, must line up with this, but then not translating that over to the group, the, the grid that we have. And so what we need to do is potentially give them hints as we go through. And so I'm going to share some of the hints just to get your brains working, see if you can start piecing these together and see if you can go through. So the first hint we would give the students is this novel solution. So actually there is a big square. There is a bit of a zigzag and there is two individual pieces. So this is the, ultimately the solution. Now, we've done a little bit of analysis on this and we get about 2% of the groups coming through, getting it without any clues, about 20% getting it with this first clue. And then what I'll do next is reveal to you a couple of the individual tiles. And it's usually by the time the students get the last one, it's all clicked into place and they're able to accurately get that number of uh, numbers matched up with the letters. So as you can see, we've slowly revealed this, that we have that Welsh flag up in the top left hand corner. That's A2. In the top right, we have the star and the book. And then in the bottom right, we have the graduate and the pizza. If I flick back, you can see that if we have in the middle, um, number seven, the top of the pizza, we have the other side of the Welsh flag. And at number five, we have the other side of the book. This all means that there is only one novel solution to this, and it all comes together into our jigsaw collage. We usually give the students about eight minutes to complete this. It's usually something that starts off really chaotic with the students, not really knowing where to look, where to start, to a real sense of them working together towards this shared goal as they go through. Now, we get a good feedback from this. Firstly, we the biggest feedback we get is that this is not what they were expecting from the interview process at all. We like to keep tabs on our competition and it is something quite novel. We speak to the students and generally they will just have face-to-face uh, -face Zoom interviews with the other the universities. They feel as though this is something that is positive, it's something that they can engage with, it's something that's fun. They get to meet other prospective students that are coming to the course and this is really valuable for them to understand the types of people that are applying to the university. It also gives us a good sense of who they are as people, which students are the, the natural leaders, who's going to go into this and take the lead and run with it, who is somebody who is a little bit more reserved, a little bit more shy. This can give us a good idea of whether or not they are a good fit for the course or if we can extrapolate the way that they perform in these to their studies. Are there people that may wish to go through extra communication skills sessions, get more uh, support for the way in which that they come across? We know that students come from all sorts of backgrounds coming through this. So we've also designed this with accessibility in mind. Some people may not be able to um, see the uh, links as we send them. So we have written descriptions of each of those that we can send through, which we found doesn't actually deviate from the task itself. We're also working on some audio recordings to allow students to be able to uh, engage with the exercise, even if they are uh, partially sighted. This is something that we've had a, a request from a student when they came through the process and felt that they wanted to engage but weren't able to. And so this is something that we're working on here. Um, I think I'm doing OK for time. Um, I'm going to say thank you and uh, hopefully there will be a few questions for me as we go towards the end of the session. Thank you for paying attention. I'll stop sharing my screen. Right then, well, I'm going to kick off and um, say thank you for coming to our talk, first of all, on digital escape rooms in nurse education. Um, my name's Kirsty and I work um, alongside Annalise and Graham at the University of Bolton. Um, myself and Annalise are lecturers in the clinical skills team and we work in collaboration with Graham who is an e-learning technologist and has been integral in our journey really. So I'd like to start off by giving you a little bit of background to our presentation. So in 2021 the clinical skills team and simulation team were tasked with creating a three-week um, on-campus placement for first-year student nurses. The placement um, involved quite a, a wide range of simulation which needed to be delivered through various methods. 
Um, digital simulation was explored at this point as an alternative method due to issues such as um, rooms and staff capacity, finances, things like that. But also as a team, we wanted to make something um, innovative and it feel quite new for our learners. And by using digital simulation, we've been able to offer that blended approach to learning, which also complemented the Nursing and Midwifery Council's interest in increasing the, um, the number of simulated hours to be used in nursing education. Simulation is kind of at the forefront of this because it's kind of being propelled forward in education and we were quite excited to explore uh, escape rooms as part of this. So by adding um, a gamification element into digital simulations, um, this was quite appealing to our team overall. It not only incorporated an enjoyable and full element, but it also added a risk, risk feature, which replicated real life stresses, which our learners feel in a clinical um, environment. We took some inspiration from various escape rooms that we'd seen on conferences like this and models and things like that. And then we took the idea of using um, gamification escape rooms to, oh, sorry, speaking through, um, to develop um, our own. The idea of using this has helped us to um, kind of build students' critical thinking as well as it being challenging and immersive. And along the escape rooms, there's quite a lot of personalization um, along this, and it gives the sense of a, a sense of belonging and an immersive feel. In our escape rooms, our learners have to make decisions regarding care delivery and implement the correct um, interventions to progress through the games. Providing the learners with the autonomy to apply that critical thinking without any jeopardy to real patient care. And essentially, those packages have given them a safe environment um, for those um, for that learning to be able to explore decision making and the underpinning knowledge for that. So we'll just sort of touch on our journey so far. So in 2022, myself and Annalise got started with um, Google Forms. We um, started with this. We hold our hands up. We are not IT literate at all. We are nurses by background and we are, um, yeah, we, we struggled. We liked Google Forms and we started making patient quizzes, um, stories and content, but we didn't have the immersive feel that we wanted from it. So we started using Articulate, which is an e-learning authoring software, and that allowed us to input uh, more realistic activities. It allowed us um, to create a seamless experience for our learners, um, inputting real life documents that they'd come across in clinical situations, as well as voice narratives and interactive activities as well. This was, again, hands in the air, a very steep learning curve for myself and Annalise, and we knew that we would need some extra IT support with it. Originally, those escape rooms were housed on a Moodle page um, on an LMS, um, but we have since um, had a bespoke platform developed for these, something that we like to call our virtual hospital. The platform was originally built to increase the immersive experience, but also house all our digital content for that um, simulated placement. Our escape rooms have developed even further since then um, with the interactions and the immersive ideas um, and themes that we've had. And we've now started working with Graham. Um, and by doing that, myself and Annalise have found that we've got more time to spend on the content and ideas um, rather than worrying about the IT aspects, because Graham can usually make our ideas come to life and give us lots of ideas or pointers on where to go with it as long as we don't go too rogue. So I'm going to hand over to Graham to tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah, I began working with uh, Kirsty and Annalise about 20, uh, in, you know, 2023, and they'd come up with some really good rough ideas using Articulate about the um, kind of escape rooms that they wanted to develop and the kind of interactions. So I kind of took their uh, ideas um, from them and began to work to produce more fully immersive escape rooms um, that would be eventually incorporated into that virtual hospital platform. So at this stage, Annalise and Kirsty very much became the uh, the subject matter experts, and I've kind of learned a lot about the nursing side of things, and I'm sure they've learned a lot about the e-learning development side from me. So it's been a nice collaboration uh, effort to design these um, these kind of escape rooms, and um, I've always had kind of a clear idea and and an, a vision of the kind of immersive experiences that they wanted the learners to experience, the real life situations that they wanted to model and the gamification elements that were built into the escape room, such as Annalise mentioned, the real life 
kind of forms and systems that they would encounter in hospital environments. And I've kind of used my skills of articulate to um, to develop those in a virtual world and to incorporate them into the um, into the escape rooms. Um, so um, it, it's kind of uh, a, a case of two disciplines coming together, me being the e-learning developer and Annalise being the subject matter es experts. And it's, a, and it's an ongoing relationship uh, that we're working now to kind of further develop these escape rooms. I'll just hang you back to, to, to Kirsty just to um, take you through some of the escape room content that we've developed. So um, our escape rooms follow a patient journey through a healthcare setting and each patient has a common healthcare um, a health condition. Each escape room is housed in an appropriate ward within our virtual hospital platform. On screen, there's a couple of examples of some of the interactive activities within the escape rooms, which allow the player to apply clinical knowledge in a virtual environment. The games were created to replicate real life nursing activities that the learners are normally only exposed to in a simulated face to face environment or on clinical placements. Learners must collect codes to progress through the games to access the next element of the patient's care. So, for example, a player might need to calculate a news two score or a fluid balance total, and then this number will formulate a code which would open a medicine cabinet and therefore they can then administer the medication that the patient needs. The escape rooms are completed remotely and autonomously, and we therefore needed to make sure that all the information was complete and was there for them for, uh, to complete the escape rooms. And we recognise learners do need um, support while they're doing the escape room. So someone from our team is always available on hand to support them through if they need us via email. The escape rooms are predominantly completed by first year student nurses. And for most, research is a new skill still being developed and nursing knowledge is, is new to them as well. So we've embedded web links and hint buttons and videos throughout the games and created a library of resources, which we house in our virtual hospital library. I'll just hand you back to Graham. OK, one of the um, one of the major developments that's happened recently is we've um, we've had access to a, a piece of software called Synthesia, where we've been able now to incorporate AI avatars into the escape room. And this is really exciting as it brings an added dimension of realism into the uh, into that like the patient journey and the avatar we've called a Sue. Uh, she's like a mentor and a guide and she acts as like a, a, a hint button where we used to have static hint pages. We now build the hints into the uh, into the Sue avatar and, and she's actually there to guide the learners through the escape rooms and to help them with any um, kind of um, actions that, in, that they need to perform. And now they feedback from learners indicate that they love, love love this AI, this avatar. Some actually think it's a real person, where in fact it's not. It's a synthetic character, but it looks so real. It just added, adds that uh, kind of uh, added realism to the escape rooms for the learners. OK, I'll hand you back to um, Annalise, who will take you through some evaluations. So we have done uh, quite some large data collections over the last two years, um, and these are being used for publications. Um, but I can share with you a small evaluation that we've done recently, which concentrates really on immersiveness and the experience of the of the escape rooms for the learners. Um, a total of 10 learners took part in this research, and they were all pre-registered student nurses um, on the on-campus simulated placements. We had a couple of Likert scales statements and um, we asked them to expand on those answers and then we had three questions which were open-ended so as you can probably tell it was really important for us that the escape rooms reflected real life experiences the player was immersed and these were not seen as traditional flipped learning packages that were clickable through and i think the quantitative data really reflects this was achieved um, the learner data clearly shows that learners also gained, gained knowledge and specifically clinical nursing knowledge from the escape rooms. Here's just a few quotes from our learners. Um, the gamification element of finding codes through the games added to the enjoyment. 
learners often referred to the virtual patients as real life patients, which was encouraging that the patient narratives that were created were realistic and the activities gave a natural progression through the game. Again, adding to that immersive experience. Um, the gamification element did pose a couple of barriers for us, as, as technology does. Learners who missed codes expressed frustration of having to go back and maybe starting again. And once the learner completed the game, but when they completed the game, they were given a certificate and a sense of achievement was expressed that they, they felt like they'd learned an awful lot through, through the escape room. A common theme of wanting more time emerge. You can see that on the last question there. We give our learners two and a half hours to complete an escape room, um, which some learners felt wasn't enough time. And although we do acknowledge this feedback in the data, the reason that we developed escape rooms and used this as a model was to add the element of pressure. We felt that this was representative of real life in a healthcare environment and thinking in action and decision making while under pressure is a skill that traditionally is learned on a ward environment or face-to-face -face simulation, but we feel that we've been able to replicate this in a virtual environment. So Graham will just talk to you about a couple of the limitations uh, with the software, as this is his area of expertise. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think the only limitation is our imagination in these situations. Um, but one of the big things is about the, um, the the ability of not to go back. I think that was that that was designed in purpose uh, on purpose for the escape rooms. We decided to have that linear progression where students could only go forward, and uh, it kind of mi mimics that real world situation where you may only have one chance to capture a particular data set, and you can't go back and recapture it. So it's that kind of real life pressure that we wanted to model. And the um, and the students having to capture that data at that point and then move forward with it. Um, so it's something to consider for, for future escape rooms, whether we allow them to go back or not. It has certain technical limitations with, with the software, but it's not an impossible thing to do. So um, thanks for listening. Yeah. Um, if anyone's got any questions, we'll leave our email addresses there. If anyone wants to share any ideas we're happy to help definitely thank you hey. very much thanks. my name's joshua hamilton and um thanks for inviting me this afternoon to talk about how we explored the educational potential of a low budget case-based escape room for medical students so just a little bit about me i'm a doctor who works 50 percent clinically and 50 percent in education as an education fellow I work at Stoke Mandible Hospital, which is part of Buckinghamshire NHS Trust, and we are a local education provider for three different medical schools, and that includes the University of Buckingham, the University of Oxford and St George's University. I also just want to very quickly uh, say thank you to my colleagues as I work with a fantastic team and to the medical students as well who enthusiastically participated in this escape room. So what we will cover, um, we're going to touch on the benefit of utilising escape rooms, but with a focus on medical education, why keeping it simple works, a suggested method already tried and tested by us, and some student feedback and evaluation from our delivered escape room. So it probably comes as no surprise to you the extensive benefits documented and explored in the application of escape rooms in education, but I do just want to briefly touch on the relevance of these to medical education in particular. So with team collaboration, for example, it's really important for medical students to learn teamwork as well as leadership. We often make decisions as part of a multidisciplinary team within the healthcare setting. And then there's critical thinking. Our students develop critical thinking skills by applying medical knowledge and they have to analyse information and make decisions under pressure within the context of the escape room scenario. And I just want to emphasise that this is actually a really important skill for our doctors as we are often under pressure to make important decisions with time limitations. I also believe that our escape room has helped explore decision making proficiency so our participants practice making time sensitive decisions, prioritising tasks, managing resources, and these all mirror the challenges faced in clinical practice and healthcare settings. Our medical escape room has helped promote the development of clinical reasoning skills 
as our participants have had to analyse symptoms, interpret diagnostic information and formulate accurate diagnoses within the game. And then interestingly, there's also conflict resolution. So escape rooms are very much fun, but it also provides a platform for addressing and resolving conflicts and emphasising cohesive teamwork within a healthcare environment. There are often differences in personalities within these games, and it's important for our students to be able to resolve these differences and opinions within a professional manner. I want to just expand on the glass half empty idiom here and how the seemingly initial challenges in developing an escape room became a real strength for us. So we teach in the hospital and so teaching space is limited and there are limited resources and availability of equipment. And it probably comes as no surprise we're tight on money due to NHS buzz budgets. And I know I'm not the first to say this, um, but I will openly admit I have only a rudimentary knowledge of digital applications and software here. So how did we turn this into a positive? Well, few resources were required. Um, and having only a basic knowledge of digital applications makes this very easily reproducible. It was very low cost and we needed only a minimal amount of space, uh, essentially just as much space as was required to fit our students in. And we found that this is actually reproducible for different year groups and specialities as well and easy to alter. So let's just take a look at how we set about designing our case based escape room. So first and foremost, we had to plan our design and we centered this around learning outcomes to develop our aims and theme. We chose clinical scoring systems in this example, but it does not have to be limited to this. You could, for example, focus on prescribing or ECG interpretations. Then we developed our cases and this is where being creative really helps. We wanted to set a narrative to make the escape room feel a bit more immersive, but there was an educational element to this. They had to be able to distinguish crucial information from the noise, similarly to physical escape rooms, if you like, where not all objects are crucial to escaping the room. And this is a really important transferable skill in uh, medicine as well. It's being able to distinguish the crucial information from the noise. We then chose to password protect our individual cases on Word documents using Microsoft Word. A numerical value was needed to open the next document, and this could only be obtained by correctly working out the clinical scoring system from the previous case. This password protection was our padlock or our combination code equivalent within the escape room format, if you like. We used a cloud to upload our documents and this allowed us to disseminate the links for the documents to our students. In some cases, they would only be able to access the next document using a valid link, which took them to the next document stored on the cloud. And then finally, and probably most crucially, is the delivery. Uh, teaching is only as good as its delivery, as I'm sure you're aware. And we wanted to ensure our students had the time to explore gaps within their knowledge afterwards. And so we put on some focused and tailored teaching for them after the game, while also providing the opportunity for some evaluation and feedback. So with limited knowledge and access to digital applications, we really had to go back to basics for our escape room. The concept of an escape room is based around reaching an end goal or target within a time period. This isn't new news to anybody. And then Usually there's the use of games or puzzles to solve within the process. And we found that despite there being little glamour and sophistication around our escape room, the students still found this task fun and the puzzles within them gave it a very gamified approach, which we exploited further by adding a competitive element with a time limit and having breakout groups to compete against each other. So here are some examples of some games that we added into our escape room. So clinical scoring systems such as the World Score or Glasgow Coma Scale uh, would provide a numerical value, which answers a password protected document for the next case. We use drug calculations as well, so our students have to be able to work out concentrations, doses, infusion rates, and these very easily provide a numerical value too. 
You can even use matching pairs, so matching best fitting answers, for example, matching the first line antibiotic with a corresponding infection. And we'll talk a little bit about, about more how we were able to do that in a moment. And then there's image interpretation where you have to identify a pathology, whether or not that's an X-ray or an electrocardiogram or even looking at a retinal photograph, for example. And I'll talk a little bit about that as well. So password protecting, it's really easy for those of you that don't know. On Microsoft Word, you just select tools, protect document, and it will give you the opportunity to add a custom password. For image interpretation, so here we've got a chest X-ray of somebody who's got a left lower lung pneumonia. So it might be on the right hand side as you're looking at it. And what you can actually do is you can add a shape using the scribble format and outline that area of consolidation or pneumonia. It's important here to make sure you select no fill so it's transparent and doesn't make it obvious for the students. And you can then right click and add a link. And this is where it becomes quite neat because you can add a link to a subsequent document you've uploaded onto your onto your drive uh, for example google drive and then that will take you to the next case just a pointer as well uh, it's always worth using viewer mode rather than editor because otherwise your students can mess about with the format here's an example of matching pairs so these are all in in order and matched correctly but matching an antibiotic to an infection and you'll notice on our pill bottles there's part of a html link at the bottom and only having these in the correct order by matching correctly will give you a valid link to obtain your next document or your next case on your Google Drive or cloud. So let's talk a little bit about our evaluation and feedback. So we delivered this to a cohort of 45 students and the escape room gathered overwhelmingly positive feedback. So we used a Likert scale. Um, we noticed our the students' perceived knowledge of clinical scoring systems increased relatively by 47%. With that, their perceived confidence in using clinical scoring systems had a 36% relative increase. 9.2 score out of 10 on the Likert scale for usefulness and uh, 9.45 for enjoyability. And we're just going to show you some uh, qualitative uh, feedback as well. So a lot of them found the sessions very fun. They found the structure appropriate. Uh, they really liked the format and the teaching as well. Um, and they found it enjoyable. So Applying this to future aims, I want to take this a little bit further by getting some more solid quantitative data by perhaps formally testing knowledge afterwards. The possibilities are endless for exploring other topics. As I said, it doesn't have to be limited to um, uh, clinical scoring systems and then perhaps even flipping the classroom and having a workshop where students are developing their own escape rooms. I'm aware we're tight for time, so I just want to leave it there and say thank you. And I believe we'll open up some questions now, I think. 